Hey guys, how's it going? This is Don Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really going to help me in improving this amazing community. And today I'm going to be answering a question from one of my subscribers and they asked me, Dilmer, how do you track your code by using, you know, source control technologies such as Git, Mercurial and others. And I want to show you what I use. I'm actually using Git right now and I use VS Code. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, so let me show you how I use source control when it comes to creating games and keeping track of the changes that I make in games. So right now I'm working on a, on a Magic Leap game and I'm basically generating procedural structures. And let me let me show you some of the some of the things that I that I have so far. So I have and this is more to explain to you how source control works. How do I track changes than my own project? But I have different things in here, like a procedural structure, a structure randomizer, and a lot of times we want to know, you know, when things change, files change. So you can see that right now I have a lot of plugins in these in VS Code, and what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show you the plugins. I'm just going to tell you in the description of this video what plugins I have, and then you're more than welcome to try those. But some of the ones that I have is I can look and see, I can look at open changes. So if you notice, I have zero references that are using this. I can also see when this was changed. So two days ago, this was changed. I can go back and this tells me, like I can, I can look at the history of all the different things that I, that I changed. In this case, I added a lot of files. So I added all of the procedural structure generation to this project. So this is really not that helpful. Other than you can see that, you know, two days ago, I added all these files. And, and this is really cool though, because you can see, you know, the history of this commit and all the things that I added. The other thing that is really helpful, say that I, that I wanted to make a change in some of these. So let's say that I wanted to refactor this and we can modify this and say, okay, let's add this and say private void update. Uh, we can say job and pitch. And we can turn this into a method and you can see how as soon as I do that, we're gonna get some changes in VS Code. So I'm gonna add this to a meta, and then we'll just call this from here. And we can see. So now what we can see is I can, I see, I, I get this little red button, this little red rectangle, and, and it's really powerful because now I can see all the things that I added. So if I, I don't know that I can resize this that easy, but the cool thing about this is I can see, oh, that's what's actually added to a meta. So you can look and say, okay, that it's a new meta. And then this is what it used to be. And then this is what it is right now. The other thing that I, that it is cool is I can also go into this little source control tree and it shows me how many changes there are in files. So I can click on it and I can also see, oh, this file was also modified. I can click on it and I can easily see side by side the changes that were made. So I know that by looking at this, I change Basically, I added this and I moved it to the update your and pitch method. So it's really easy to, to find out if you have changes. You can now you can now look in here and say, okay, take me to the, you know, open the file. I can look and look at the next change. Let's say that I added I add another change to the file. So we can close it. We can say, okay, let's add another method. Let me see what I can refactor here. Let's say that I add, so we have a randomized your and pitch and let me let me change this instead of being public like that we can say private and we can say serialize fill this is the structure that i like whenever i'm making things public all right now that i see that let's see if i have references that i that are going to need that so these references are on let me make sure that they are on the same file so they're on the same file so i think we should be fine as far as like making it public or not all right so now that i see that i can see that i have another change so let's close this close this, I can go into this and I can see, okay, I made that, I, I changed the accessor from public to private. I also added a new attribute, which is serialized field. Okay, that's great. So now that I have that, I can go and say, okay, I wanna go to the next change and that will take me to the next change. And basically I can find out what happened, what happened with this file. So the other thing that I can do, say that I didn't wanna make these changes and I wanted to discard these changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy all these so that I can have the changes later. Let's say that I didn't wanna make these changes. 
and for whatever reason we we decided not to make the changes or we might be troubleshooting things we might be trying different things you can click on these discard changes and it's going to warn you are you sure that you want to discard the changes on this file we can say yes discard the changes and now we're basically back to where we were initially so so that's really great because you can so whenever i'm making changes and prototyping it's really easy for me to you know just create a new branch or even make changes to the, cur the current branch and, and know that i have the tools the sufficient tools the powerful tools to be able to track changes to be able to make sure that i you know i'm not bringing in new new issues so so this is great let's say that we go back to let's go back to that so i copy and paste what i had before and we're back to where we were the other things that i can do here is i can say okay you know i want to stage these changes because i I want to I want to commit them because another developer is going to need these changes. So I'm going to say okay, state changes, and you can see that now I have a state changes in here, and that's the same thing as doing. So if you go, if you're used to using the terminal, or if you're used to using something like source tree, which is a which is a UI to to handle your source control, it's the same the same thing as saying git add and then with a specific file. So you can say git add dash a. And that would basically stage all the changes. So by doing what I did by staging the changes on the file, that's basically saying git add and then the file name, which is staging those files. So the other thing that you can do is, you know, I decide later on that I didn't want to stage this. So this is really cool because I can say on stage. So so now I know that those are changes that I really don't want to stage because maybe the other developer has the same changes already. The other thing that I can do, I can say git status. So if I'm using the terminal, you can see that that is the same thing that we're getting by, by looking at the modifiers files, by doing the command of git status. So let's say that I do want to add it. So I'm going to say, you know what, I do want to add that change. So I'm going to state the changes. Then, you know, maybe I decide to, to commit those changes. So you can also right click in here. And I haven't really known, I, I haven't really used this as far as like committing, committing changes. So they have what's called stash changes so we can say okay stash changes and we can get a message so this is basically saying i'm going to commit and we can say okay we made made improvements to the structure randomizer and we can hit enter to confirm and now we can say okay so that is being committed and i believe that that's that's basically what happened so the other, thing, the other thing that I can do is, and I haven't done it through, through VS Code yet, you can also push those changes. So you have these three dots in here, so that I, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to push. You can say, okay, push. And that is basically changing, that's basically pushing things to the, to the remote repo. And this is say, would you like to, would you like code to periodically run git fetch? I'm gonna say, no, I don't really want to, I don't really want it to automatically do that. So the other thing we can say, okay, let's see if those changes made it to made it to the repo. So I'm gonna go and open it up. And let me open Chrome. And I have this one in big bucket. So let me let me go to big bucket, see if those changes made it to my repository. And honestly, I use the terminal most of the time, but I'm finding myself using a lot of the tools in VS Code very, you know, frequently. So I can see the nine minutes ago this was basically there were changes that were made. And let me see if they actually made it made it in. So I can go into my commit history. And I can see added controller, added controller improvements. And I don't see my latest commit. Let's wait until this is on. And let me make sure that this was. So we did a pull. Let me see what's happening by going into the terminal. So I can say git status. Let's just do a git push through here. See what happens. And we're gonna wait until this finishes. Is this that everything was committed successfully? And let me make sure that I am on the right branch. And add a controller improvements. Let's see. Let me go back into here. And I'm going to I'm going let me let me do a git status and changes. Commit a stage, commit all. So what I did, I actually did, oh, okay. Apply the, let's go ahead and apply the latest stash, which was that change, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go here and I'm gonna say, you know, I want to commit everything that I have right now. So I'm gonna say, 
there are no state changes to come in, so you do have to stage them. So I'm gonna say, okay, stage changes, which is gonna be the git add. Now we're gonna go here and say, okay, I wanna commit everything. And we can say, okay, a refactoring was made on a structure randomizer. We can hit enter. And now we should be able to push. And we can see what's happening. Now let's go back into my repository. And you can see that those those changes made it in. The reason why I didn't see it before, and I have an issue on the <laughs> a typo in there, that's okay. The reason why they, it didn't work before because they actually stash it instead of adding and committing and committing the file. So you have a lot of functionality in here as far as like, you know, you want to commit things, you want to discard changes. If you want to stash, just like I did, you can do it through here as well. If you want to pull, let's say that I make a change, a change on the remote. So if we go here, and I believe I already have a readme file. Let me make sure that I do have a readme file. And if I don't have a readme file, that's okay. We can, and we can say, we can say, okay, I'm gonna edit this file. Let's see if, let's see if we can, if I can edit. I haven't done this on the, on the, on the files that are on the remote. It's probably not safe to do that commit that meta file. Let's go ahead and select another file that I'm pretty familiar with, which is the git ignore. Let's say that I add a git ignore and I make a change to this. And we can go ahead and say, this is dumb files, which is gonna be the DS store. Excellent. And we can say, okay, commit. Say that we wanna commit that change. Excellent. And we can go ahead and say, now we can go back into VS code and click on the dot, 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 and we can say a poll. And looks like that should have pulled everything. Let's go ahead and see if that change was made. And let me see where my file, well, my git ignore. So I don't see the git ignore there because I'm in the project. Well, we can go in here and see what happened. And we can go, and we can say done file. So you can see that I was able to pull everything from the remote, and also I was able to pull you know the changes that were made so so that's basically an overview of source control that you see in vs code and if you guys have any questions please let me know all right guys thank you very much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions please let me know also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers also find me in patreon.com where i'm posting information about what i'm doing behind the scenes also early access to source code so thank you very much guys